G'day. Just here fetching the old 310 from a 200 hourly. Yes, that's right, 200 hourly, not a 100 hourly on this particular system of maintenance. And I uh, thought you might all like to come along for the ferry. This is probably my favourite piston twin, this machine. Um, I, I um, reckon it's up there in enjoyment as far as flying with the caravan and the beaver. So it's my top three favourite machines of our fleet. Anyway, we'll jump in, I'll put a seatbelt on, and I'll talk you through quick flight in a 310. Here we are, we're ready to go. Now, I apologise that I didn't show you the start. Uh, I'm just watching wing tip clearance. Uh, I didn't show you the start because I was talking to a camera that was turned off and then I already had the engine started before I realised. Uh, but I promise you, it was an okay start, even though I acknowledge that there are three rules for how to hot start a 310 and no one knows what they are. But I promise you I haven't shown you the start because I bungled it. And you don't on comp 2. We are talking on comp 2, listening on comp 2. Wave to that nice man. Traffic Mailing, you're calling Foxtrot 310, taxis are runway 05. Traffic Mailing. Okay. For my start flow though, which I, uh, I, I did just talk through to myself, uh, I start to. Uh, a 310, uh, basically with the, the flow the same as I do with just about every Cessna. Um, I start with fuel taps, which are down, uh, down on the floor here. Uh, the only difference to all the other Cessnas is the caravan that they'll start up here. But aside from that, same difference. We'll go from the uh, fuel, fuel taps to the pedestal. We'll go up the pedestal to the aileron trim there. Um, you'll find aileron and rudder trim are uh, the opposite way around to each other to something say a chieftain. So it always confuses me, 50-50-90 rule. It's a 50-50 chance of guessing the right one. I always wind the wrong one. Or 90% of the time I wind the wrong one. Put that park brake on and go up to the cow flaps, making sure they're open. Elevator trim, the uh, throttles, and I bring the mixtures up. Then I flow across to the mags, to the battery master, check that we've got some greens for the the gear, uh, all of the uh, circuit breakers, all of the, the light switches, and then we'll come back around, check all their instruments, and then back to the start here. Uh, but now we have it running, we're just going to let it warm up, everything's come up into the green, we've been running for a couple of minutes now, and uh, then we will uh, do a run up and duck from Maitland across to Cessnock. So the run-up on the 310 is uh, is very gentlemanly. It's, um, you don't go to near as high an RPM as you do in a Chieftain, uh, so it makes a lot less noise. We'll still check that there's no one behind us. Okay, I'm happy with those. So mixtures can come up to rich. Now all we've got to do is bring it up to 1700 RPM. Nice low revving Continentals. Temperatures and pressures are still happy as we bring the powers up. It's 1700 RPM. Now, we don't have to do three prop cycles like we do in most of them. It just asks for one feather check, which the feather check is actually got to pull past a little detent here. So I'll do it with the other hand so you can see. And we'll come back and not much will happen until we go past the detent. Then we catch it with a drop of you know, no more than 500 RPM because if we go more than that, then it, um, it may actually feather. I'm just going to get that throttle friction up and the other engine. Okay, happy. And that's all it asks for. It doesn't ask for the three cycles. We'll now do our mag check, which I lift my ear cup because I'm deaf so that I can see. I'm not that deaf, but I like to be able to hear outside these nice headsets whether it's a smooth drop or not. All nice and smooth and even. Okey doke suction. We have in the green, both Dole's lights are out. We have both alternator fail lights out and we've got a positive charge. We'll now bring it back down to check the idle. Now, as a lot of you know, I don't like doing an idle check in an IFR machine just before I blast off because the suction can drop off. And, uh, and then we uh, might blast off and not have our AH erect yet. Uh, but in this machine, digital one, and also VFR, and just came out of maintenance, so I just like to check everything. That was a happy RPM, sitting about 700 for idle. Okie doke, all is set. We will now run through our temp fish flow. So trims, one, two, and three, all neutral. 
trims, mixtures are going to come with the lineup checks. My rule with leaning the mixture in the taxi is either lean them so hardcore that when you try and push the power up, it conks out and you can't get airborne, or don't lean them at all, except that you might have to clear a foul plug. Uh, that'll at least stop you from trying to take off with partial power with mixtures partly leaned. So mixtures to come. Magnetos, one, two, three, four. Masters, one, two, three. And avionics and autopilot in this machine. Propellers are full fine. Park brake can go off now. Fuel, we are on the main still, and we have the lights out, which if the lights were on, that would indicate we're on the oxes. And we also have the low fuel lights not illuminated, which are over here on the left side of the panel. Uh, fuel flaps are set zero, indicating zero, and unfortunately can't uh, visually confirm in a 310 because they're the split flaps are hidden by the wings. Instruments, we're going to set this for runway heading, runway 05, we've set our altimeter, set our altimeter, and we will bring that to a homepage, Maitland, Y, A, B, C, A, B, C, H, O, K, K, L, M, M, uh, oops, I've forgotten the alphabet, I should have listened harder at school, M, N, A, F, G, J, Okay, enter, and we'll go to default nav for that one. It's also aligned with our GPS onto our CDI. Um, and we will also bug an altitude of 1,500. Okay, instruments, and I'll set my backups as well. Instruments over there, happy switches. Nav lights are on. The landing lights can stay off for the moment, and the taxi light can come on. And instrument switches controls, full, free, and correct. Particularly important after maintenance when all things are being pulled apart. That all feels good. And the rudders have already checked in the taxi. Instrument switches controls and hatches and harnesses. So door is locked. I'll now put my top strap of my seat belt on. Click, click, front and back. That's something I did learn at school. Um, and the window shut. Okay, doke. Okay. Now. We'll still pull out a checklist and check the vitals in case we missed anything on our flow. So fuel, we are in the mains. Flaps, we have set zero. Trims, we have definitely set. Enunciators are out. And what we're talking by there is our fuel lights. And the autopilot uh, tested and checked if I was going to use it, but I'm not going to use it there. So we will leave it off to avoid me having to test it for a couple of minute flight. Okay, Jack. So now we'll do a takeoff safety brief. Um, very important on every takeoff, but particularly if, like me, you fly a heap of different twins, you want to get your uh, your blue line speeds correct. So in the 310, we're going to line up on runway 05 there. If we have an engine fire failure, a major abnormality whilst we're on the runway, then we're going to abort the takeoff, maintain directional control, pull the powers to idle, pull up and brake. Uh, I've already airborne, but we're below the 106 knot blue line, which is uh, there marked on our airspeed indicator and is marked on the digital one too once it comes alive. Uh, then we're still going to abort the takeoff, powers to idle, maintain directional control, land on the remaining runway or the paddocks in the overrun if required. If we're airborne and we're at or above our 106 knot blue line with the gear either up or in transit, then we're going to continue the takeoff. So what we're going to do first of all is maintain directional control, wings level, ball centre. So at least nothing else. We're going to have the aeroplane flying. It's just not going to be flying particularly well, so we need to maximise our performance if we can. So what we'll do to uh, to achieve that is go mix up, pitch up, power up, confirm the gears up, flaps up, identify our dead leg, dead engine. So we'll then cycle the throttle of the leg that we think is the dead engine, and uh, if we're correct, there should be no yaw because the engine's already already failed. Uh, if we've got the correct engine, we'll flag it back here so it's the only lever pointing out at us making it very obvious which one it is so let's say it's the right one in this example we'll then reconfirm in this case the right pitch lever we'll pull it to feather then we'll maintain not below our blue line and we'll come around for a landing on runway 05 uh, in this particular case it was early after takeoff I'd actually make a right turn regardless of the engine just because of the terrain that you might not be able to see with the camera but there's some terrain out to our left okay doke let's go and do it